Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Pastor Daniel. This is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about smoldering anger, starting off in the book of Hosea. So grab your Bible and get ready to dive right in with us. Anger is something all of us deal with, and if you have never dealt with it, welcome to planet Earth. It's coming your way. Um, <laughs> no, but for real, we all encounter things, and anger is, uh, is, is a normal emotion. But what we do with that emotion and how long we hold on to that emotion can vary immensely. In yep. Hosea chapter 7, verses 6 and uh, and seven, it kind of talks about these guys' anger. For they are kindled like an oven, their heart burns within them. All night their anger smolders. In the morning it blazes like a flaming fire. All of them are hot as an oven, and they devour their rulers. All their kings have fallen. None of them calls upon me. When when I, I read this, uh, their anger smolders. <laughs> like, like, it's quite a picture, but like, yeah. It's easy to hold on to uh, anger and to hold on to offense. And what happens, and, and uh, as it's spelling it out, he's like, hey, they held on to it all night. And in the morning, it is a blazing, flaming fire. And, and that picture uh, is, is vivid, but it, it's frequent inside of people's marriages, yeah. inside of people's families, inside of people's workplaces. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Through the pen? Yeah, uh, I just, Too many things. In your anger, do not sin. Or be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And give no opportunity for the devil. When we uh, hold on to anger, he said, hey, don't do that. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. He goes, when we do, it gives place for the devil in our lives. And this idea that we're supposed to forgive comes up over and over. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Colossians 3, 13. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And that the idea that we're supposed to forgive like Jesus forgave is just a whole nother level. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it many become defiled. Bitterness, uh, when we hold on to offense, it defiles many. Yeah. Um, and recognizing just how much it talks about this, uh, Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to anger, but the wise quietly holds it back. Um, when we let this anger control us and mark us, uh, a lot of times we feel very justified because we measure our anger based on what happened to us. And we can sit here and go, well, I have a right to let it smolder. You don't understand what they did to me. And you're not wrong in that what was done to you may have been awful. Right. But what we fail to see is that when we let anger continue to smolder, when we continue to let anger sit in our lap, uh, Ecclesiastes says, uh, be not quick in your spirit to become angry for anger lodges in the heart of fools or in the lap of fools. When we hold on to it, it begins to destroy us. Offense is a fence for the one who holds it. It makes a jail cell that imprisons the holder. Yeah. When we take offense, we often think, I'm going to jail that person up. But we put up this fence and we're the one inside. Yeah. And it is our future that begins to be robbed by offense. A life surrounded by the fence of offense is unable to move freely into the future. Uh, 
when the offense becomes a defining moment and it changes it from an experience to an identity. Yeah. And it's so common to talk to somebody who's been through something awful, but rather than it be um, an event in their past, it becomes their identity. Yeah. As I went through X and I, and, and then I, they'll begin to say, well, I'm, I am X because this is what I went through. Yeah. And it can become so awful. And we can become robbed when we continue to hold on to it. And then yesterday goes with us every day into the future. When we forgive, like the Bible tells us, it's not about just like, oh, the other person doesn't deserve it. That's totally true and probably why they need it. But when we begin to forgive, we begin to be set free. And it takes down some of the walls in our own heart so that we can move forward. Yeah, forgiveness really is releasing them to the Lord and saying, God, I don't need this. God, I don't need to try to hate this person. I don't need revenge. I don't need to try to give it back, get back at them in any way. God, I'm giving it to you. And I'm saying, I release them to you. And when we can even pray for the person that hurt us and say, God, I pray that they would choose you. God, I pray that you would draw them to you. Then that is one of the things that it doesn't just stop our anger and it doesn't just free us, but it's taking down the enemy's kingdom. Because think about that. The person that needs forgiveness, whatever they did was wrong. That's why they need to be forgiven. Yep. And that wrong most likely came from the enemy. It came from the devil, inspiring them or giving them ideas or whatever compromises they allowed in their life. So if we can get that person that did evil against you to get saved and to come into God's kingdom, then you're stealing from the enemy who was really the source of all of the sin and really was the source of wanting you to be destroyed. What does the Bible tell us the devil comes to do? To steal, kill, and destroy. But when we steal from his kingdom, then we're able to bring that person into the kingdom and allow the kingdom to continue to grow. So one of the things I've done to pray for people that have hurt me in my past is I say, God, I pray that they would come to know you in such a way that they are able to bring others into your kingdom too. That way we are all (laughs) taking that from the enemy. We are all stealing from him and populating heaven. Yeah. And one one side note on this, uh, forgiveness and trust are different. Very. And we need to forgive, but that does not mean we need to trust or to keep ourselves in harm's way. Correct. Uh, if, if I have a debt to the bank and I cannot pay it, and the bank decides that they're going to forgive my loan, That means I don't owe them for this loan. But if I turn around tomorrow and say, hey, I'd like another loan, they're going to look at me and go, you're crazy. You didn't pay the last one. And likewise, if we're in a spot where someone is continuing to hurt us, we need to not let this become the landmark that defines us and limits the rest of our life. But we don't want to stay in a spot where we're continuing to be uh, hurt or endangered. Right. So if there's abuse there, it is okay to say, I forgive you, and I'm no longer going to be with you, and to walk away from that. Yeah. And recognizing the difference between those is really important. But let's confess some of God's word over our lives this morning. I live generously. I live generously. Overflowing with God's love. Overflowing with God's love. In all I do. In all I do. I am filled with the grace. I am filled with the grace. And power of God. And the power of God. I stand in prayer. I stand in prayer. I see God's will done. I see God's will done. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. I am quick to listen. I am quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. And slow to become angry. And slow to become angry. I encourage others. I encourage others. And build them up. And build them up. Whatever I speak or do. Whatever I speak or do. I do everything in the name of the Lord. Jesus. I do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. God, I thank you for each person who's joining us, God, and for the amazing forgiveness that you poured out for us. God, and I pray that that forgiveness would wash through us God, that we would receive your forgiveness and that we would extend that forgiveness to those who've wronged us. God, that your grace would empower us to go beyond our own ability to see your will done. And God, that we could be part of seeing your kingdom advance and seeing the enemy's kingdom plundered, saving these souls and changing it for eternity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this encouraged you. If it did, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we want to invite you to get into God's Word for yourself each day to discover who He is and what He has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.